Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Good day folks, we're happy to be back and here is the latest ASEAN news. Malaysia has detected first case of Omicron coronavirus. Health Minister said Malaysia has detected its first case of Omicron coronavirus variant in a foreign student who was quarantined after arrival from South Africa two weeks ago. The 19-year-old woman, who was asymptomatic and had been vaccinated, had tested positive for COVID-19 on arrival in Malaysia via Singapore and was quarantined for 10 days before being released on November 29. Kes ini melibatkan seorang pengembara bukan warga. This case involves a 19-year-old foreign traveler who arrived from South Africa via Singapore on November 19. Selatan, melalui Singapura pada 19 November. Khairi added, Malaysia will immediately impose further restrictions, including additional tests for vaccinated travelers from Singapore who are allowed to enter Malaysia without quarantine. Pengesanan kontak rapat telah dijalankan ke atas semua penumpang bas. Contact tracing has been carried out on all passengers and the driver. Altogether five people. They have undergone COVID-19 screening and mandatory quarantine. The results of both the first and second samples of all close contacts were confirmed to be negative. Semua kontak rapat disahkan negatif. This week, Malaysia temporarily banned the entry of travelers from eight southern African countries that have reported the presence of variant or are considered high risk. Aung San Suu Kyi verdict you follow in court deferral. A court in Myanmar is expected to deliver a verdict on ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi for allegedly breaching COVID-19 restrictions during a general election campaign. A verdict was due but was deferred according to a source familiar with the proceedings. The verdict will be the first in Suu Kyi's trial. She is facing 11 criminal cases with maximum sentences that total more than a century in jail. Those include corruption and violating the Official Secrets Act. As Prime Minister Abe said, I also think it is important that an independent investigation commission will conduct a right and appropriate investigation. Suchi's court hearings are being conducted behind closed doors and defense lawyers, the only source of information on the proceedings, are imposed gag orders by the authorities. Regrettably, The Gambia has placed before the court an incomplete and misleading factual picture of the situation in Rakhine State in Myanmar. Yet, it is of the utmost importance that the court assess the situation obtaining on the ground in Rakhine dispassionately and accurately. The country's military had seized power on February 1st, overthrowing and detaining the elected civilian leader Suu Kyi. It said it took power because its complaints, offered by Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy Party, which won last year's election in a landslide, were being ignored by the Election Commission. The National League for Democracy Party say it's won fairly. China and Laos open up high-speed rail link. A 6 billion high speed rail line connecting China to Southeast Asia neighbor Laos opened up the key milestone in Beijing's ambitious Belt and Road infrastructure plans. Chinese President Xi Jinping and his Lao counterpart Tong Long Sisoluit attended a virtual ceremony to mark the maiden voyages on the line, which stretches from the southwestern Chinese city of Kunming to the Laos capital, Vientiane. China, which holds a 70% stake in the joint venture project signed in 2015, hopes the 1,000-kilometer line will eventually expand through Thailand and Malaysia to Singapore. In a video meeting between the two leaders earlier on Friday, she said the country stood at a new historical starting point. China is willing to strengthen strategic communication with Laos, promote the high-quality development of the Belt and Road Initiative, and continue to build an unbreakable China-Laos community with a shared future. He said in comments published by Chinese state broadcaster CCTV. A 
Economists have warned the rail project could make it difficult for communist Laos, one of Asia's poorest nations, to repay external debt, much of it owed to China. Laos State News Agency KPL report the project was part of the government's strategy to convert Laos from a landlocked country to a land-linked one. Drone shots show pristine waters returning to the Philippines after prolonged closure. For 23-year-old local tour guide Samuel Garilao, the beaches on the Philippine island of Boracay have never been cleaner and the water clearer. When the lockdown started, we saw less trash because there were no tourists coming in. And the local residents of Boracay decided to take this time to unite and clean up the beachfront. Growing up on the popular holiday destination, Garilao is used to seeing Boracay crowded with tourists and the visceral impacts of over-tourism. Over the past 21 months, with the international border closures and travel restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Garilao witnessed how the beach in Boracay has slowly made a natural recovery. Boracay attracted 2 million visitors in 2019 and ranked in 1 billion in revenue, but its environment suffered with garbage pileups, rampant land encroachment, and narrow roads clogged with traffic emitting polluting fumes. We can see the marine wildlife returning. We have seen the return of whale sharks, baby sharks, and sea turtles. Some have started nesting on the northern part of Borkai. So these are some positive effects of the lockdowns. The environment is able to regenerate itself naturally. Um, positive uh, effect of uh, the lockdowns, you know. Uh, the environment is able to regenerate naturally. Natividad Bernardino, head of Boracay's rehabilitation program, said the island's lockdown had benefited its marine life, which has once dwindled due to the high volume of tourists. What we can do to ensure that we maintain it is to have the right mechanisms in place and good governance, really, to enforce or ensure that uh, the permanence of rehabilitation outcomes or uh, restored ecosystems uh, is there. President Rodrigo Duterte in 2018 ordered a six-month closure of Boracay due to the amount of waste generated on the island. In October this year, the national government allowed the resumption of local tourism due to the downward trend of coronavirus cases in the country, but has backpedaled on the reopening for international tourism due to the threat of Omicron variant. At least 18 people missing by floats and landslides in central Vietnam. Heavy rains that trigger floats and landslides in central Vietnam have left at least 18 people missing, some feared dead, with houses destroyed and roads damaged, authorities said. The rains have subsided, however, and efforts were underway to locate those missing, the government said in a statement. Some national highways, interprovincial and local roads were partially blocked. Beach towns Puyen, Binh Dinh and Vietnam's main coffee-growing province, Dak Lak, were hardest hit. The floods have inundated 780 hectares of rice fields, although no damage has been reported so far to the coffee farms. Vietnam is prone to storms and flooding due to its long coastline. Natural disasters, predominantly floods and landslides from storms, killed 378 people last year. The defense chiefs of the United States and South Korea will update war plans. The defense chiefs of the United States and South Korea said they will review and update ways to deter North Korea, even as they emphasize the growing regional role of Seoul. North Korea's missile and weapons developments are increasingly destabilizing for regional security, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said after talks with his South Korean counterpart, Su Wok, but the two sides also discussed issues beyond the Korean Peninsula. We also reaffirmed our shared assessment that the DPRK is continuing to advance its missile and weapons programs. 
which is increasingly destabilizing for regional security. The United States and the ROK remain committed to a diplomatic approach to the DPRK. And we continue to call upon the DPRK to engage in dialogue. A changing security environment prompted the United States and South Korea to agree to update strategic guidance about how they plan for a potential conflict with North Korea, as well as review their combined military command, SUSAID. U.S. and South Korean officials cautioned that the updates of the contingent war plans are routine and not a preparation for war. At today's meeting, we shared many progress statuses related to these tasks and agreed to conclude them within next year. In addition, after reaffirming that conditions listed in the operational control transition plan must be sufficiently satisfied, we also decided to execute the Future Combined Forces Command and full operational capability assessment in 2022. Currently, the United States would command Allied troops in the event of war, but South Korea has been seeking to gain operational control. Su said that currently the United States would command Allied troops in the event of war, but South Korea has been seeking to gain operational control. Su said the two sides made progress on meeting conditions for operational control transfer to South Korea and agreed to assess the future command's full operational capability next year. But we also discuss measures to enhance our combined deterrence posture and to defend against the, the full range of threats. We also approved new strategic planning guidance, an important step forward to frame forthcoming alliance planning efforts. South Korea and the United States are global partners. We are exploring ways to work closely together to ensure the peace and stability of the entire world. In relation to this, rather than discussing threats of specific countries, we are continuing to explore the areas of cooperation in our government's new southern policy and the U.S. Indo-Pacific strategy. Austin also suggested any U.S. response to Russia's actions towards Ukraine will to be carried out in conjunction with the international community as he called on Moscow to be transparent about its military build-up. And that's the whole news for today, folks. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye.